Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine coming to you with a weekly podcast. I think I have an interesting subject today. As you know, I study as a physician longevity, plus I'm a 68-year-old man, and I want to do the best things that I can to stay healthy and live a long, healthy health span, not lifespan, health span. That's a period of time when you feel great and are functioning at a good level. So anyway, I wanted to go over some of the things I've learned through the years. And even recently, you know, I I meet with a lot of longevity experts, go to a lot of conferences, and I do a lot of research on this and try to come up with ways that you can stay healthier longer. Um, So can you live a healthier, longer life by taking supplements? My answer is yes. Um, Nothing will outdo exercise great nutrition, good sleep, and hormone optimization. But, you know, most of us are going to need supplements because you just can't eat enough to get all the things you really need if you want to fight this aging process like you really need to. Um, When you get down to a cellular level, and consider things like cellular energy. You know, I talk a lot about mitochondria. Um, I talk about cellular senescence and autophagy, which means the clearing out of older, um, poor functioning cellular debris and make room for new growth. That's a big thing. Um, your mitochondria depend on it. Um, you know, and I do, I do a lot of podcasting about mitochondria if you look back at what I've talked about before. So, yes, there are supplements that help these processes tremendously, I think. You know, at the center of these, you always start with vitamin B3, niacin. I really want to clear up a lot about niacin because there's many forms of it, and they have different purposes. Um, Like, there's different forms like NAD, NMN, nicotinamide, niacinamide, nicotinamide riboside. So it can be kind of confusing. Niacin is vitamin B3. That's what most people think of it. And it's it's also called nicotinic acid. Niacin and nicotinic acid are the same thing. Um, It's really a nutrient that's important for regulating metabolism, neurons, system functions, and it's an antioxidant. Our bodies can't make niacin, or very little of it, so we get it by eating really plant-based products like nuts, seeds, green vegetables, vitamins. Um, And, you know, I've used a lot of niacin to lower cholesterol, especially if I don't want to use a statin. Um, You know, if I'm worried about it, I'll use niacin quite a bit. Um, The thing about niacin, it will lower your LDL, the bad cholesterol, and raise your HDL. Of course, there's a lot more to that when you get into the particle size, APOB, LP, little a, all that, uh, which we do get into to make our decision on what we need to do. Um, But so I like niacin. The problem with niacin is if you go out and buy it over the counter, which you can, it's going to cause extreme flushing in most people. Some people go to the emergency room because they think they're having an allergic reaction to it. They're not. It, it causes a really uncomfortable flushing with most people. Uh, so you have to know what you're doing when you use this. You know, I order the 100 milligram tablets and instead of the 500 milligram tablets to start out and I advance it by another 100 milligrams every four nights. I usually have you take it with an aspirin at night so it gets you through the mild bit of flushing you're going to do as you build up with it. So I do like it for that but that's really not what I'm going to talk about today in regards to niacin. I'm going to talk about the other reasons that I use this. So I've digressed a little bit, but hopefully you got a little education on that. Um, So in this article, I really want to focus on the longevity aspects of the alternative forms of vitamin B3, which is niacin. Um, Nicotinamide and niacinamide are the same thing. So you got to remember that. Um, And I'm going to use probably the word niacinamide. 
uh, mostly, but they're the same thing. And you get this form of B3 from meat and poultry, um, a little bit of it from that. Probably not enough for these purposes, but um, that's where it comes from. And it doesn't cause flushing. It also will not lower your cholesterol. It's not what we're using it for here. Then you have another a form called NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide. It's somewhat produced in our bodies, but the most are biosynthetic forms that we can supplement with. Um, it's small enough to be absorbed in your system. That's a problem with a lot of this. It's not absorbable. So it's gotten a lot of press lately for a couple of reasons. One, because of Harvard longevity professor, Dr. David Sinclair, talks it about a lot. He takes it. I have his protocols. Um, but his research has shown that it increases muscle in older men and increases insulin sensitivity in older women, along with a lot of other beneficial things that it does. For some reason, it's been taken off the shelves of Amazon, and it's kind of hard to get. Um, probably the FDA doesn't like it because it works. Um, it kind of reminds me uh, when they banned NAC, N-A-C, N-acetylcysteine, uh, because it's used as a drug that's very beneficial as a mucolytic. Um, so NMR is being investigated as a beneficial drug. So they want control of it. So it's, it's hard to get right now. Um, besides that, I'll tell you, I, I really prefer no, another form of it anyway. Um, so um, all the forms of B3 have benefits. But what you're aiming for, really, if you do the research, is you want to increase the amount of NAD plus uh, that we need in our bodies. It's for ultimately repair and longevity. NAD plus. Um, studies show that NAD plus can protect cells from stress, repair DNA, even help your sleep cycle. Um, think about your circadian rhythm. It can help you lose weight. Um, and as we age, like a lot of things, the amount of NAD plus really goes down. I mean, by the time you're 70 years old, 70% of it's gone and we need it to age well from almost everything in every cell. So NAD plus is a big deal. Um, it's required for sirtuins to do their thing. Um, you know, those are those proteins that are involved in genetic cellular repair if you do the research. Um, and they help us stay longer and stay thinner. But you can't just take an NAD pill, really, even though some people claim you can. The molecule is really just too big to enter the cell. Um, you know, but there's a lot of research going on about this. There's new stuff that will probably be developed that you can take it. But for right now, you really need a precursor, something to stimulate in, and break down into NAD+, like NMN or niacinamide or nicotinamide riboside. Um, really, and that's my preference because it adds a beneficial ribose sugar to it, which makes it last longer and it doesn't get downgraded as much. You know, I like the niacinamide powder because it's cheaper, um, but it really gets eaten up in your stomach pretty quickly, and you're going to have to dose it three times a day. So I prefer a longer form of nicotinamide riboside. Um, the whole point of the beef 3 derivatives for healthy aging is to increase this NAD+. Remember that. Uh, whether you do it from NMR, NR, or just niacinamide, it's going to help you age. Your levels of NAD plus rapidly decline. Um, and there are some natural ways you can slightly increase NAD plus. Um, inf infrared sauna comes to mind, intermittent fasting, um, and of course, exercise. Nothing really replaces exercise for longevity and health. And then close behind it is nutrition. Um, and then stress, sleep. I mean, you need to do it all. Um, there's a couple other supplements that I really like, and I'll tell you the reason I'm talking about these at the end. But um, another one that I really like is apigenin. Um, I've talked about it in the past. It's a really unique longevity supplement that I like. I take it. Um, if you ever listen to Dr. Huberman's podcast, he talks about it all the time. It's in his sleep stack. 
Um, it's a flavonoid. And a flavonoid, remember, is a plant chemical that protects the plant from organisms that try to eat it and also radiation from the sun. So um, it's th that's what flavonoids do. This is just a really particular potent flavonoid. Um, you know, Huberman talks a, lo a lot about it because he loves it for improved sleep, mood, um, and it's a really potent antioxidant. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory. It's a chemo-preventative. It increases your testosterone. It's very neuroprotective. Um, it decreases cancer rates, and it increases your NAD+. Remember that. It's another way to increase that NAD+. That's so important. Think of chamomile tea that has apigenin in it. Um, parsley also has a lot of that in it. So it's very beneficial. It's one of my favorite supplements. Um, you know, without getting too deep, the apigenin, it really increases antioxidant enzymes like SOD, superoxide dismutase, and increases in expression of NERF2, um, that transcription factor that regulates a wide variety of antioxidant genes. You know, we could get deep in the biochemistry of a lot of this stuff. You probably don't want to do that. That's what my job is to make that complicated stuff simple and usable uh, for most of us, us common people. Um, so I really like apigenin. Um, astralagus. I'm sure people have heard about that, but not a lot of people really know about it. But it's a really extremely potent immunity building uh, plant. It comes from a plant which offers a lot of health benefits. It's an adaptogen, meaning it helps you deal with stress. Um, it lowers stress, helps normalize blood sugars, supports cardiovascular health, fights cancer, and improves the side effects and the effects of chemotherapy if you have to do that. Um, it strengthens your immune system, um, which is what it's mostly known for. It also protects your kidneys and your brain. Now, I got introduced to astralagus when I go to a lot of these meetings, and they, and they really, um, the gold standard for anti-aging supplements is something called TA-65. You know, they're at every meeting I go to, um, which is really, um, astralagus is their main ingredient in that. It's really expensive. I mean, it's prohibitive even for me to take it. So um, maybe I'm too cheap. But anyway, it's really expensive. So I don't, you know, I don't really recommend it to many of my patients because nobody can really afford it. Um, but it's been shown to lengthen telomeres. You know, that's the caps of your DNA. That's kind of the ultimate really marker of how long you're going to live is how long it takes these things to degenerate. Um, I've actually had mine checked uh, years ago. Um, but anyway, so when you think about astralagus, you're thinking about a really potent uh, longevity supplement, probably the most potent. Um, you know, from years of doing this research on longevity, um, I'm sure you're going to hear about some others like resveratrol, which is very good. Um, Fisetin's another one. Uh, metformin's another one. Slightly controversial, but most of the professors that give our lectures in longevity take take it. Um, and then there's probably the ultimate prescription drug for it, rapamycin. You know, go go back and look in the archives and listen to me talk about rapamycin. Um, really interesting prescription medicine that, that that can be kind of amazing. But anyway, the, the whole point of me talking about uh, these longevity supplements is that, you know, I like supplements. I take a lot of supplements 20 years ago. You know, I wouldn't have because I didn't have the knowledge. And, you know, doctors, when they don't know something about things, they try to poo-poo or say, hey, you're going to pee out these vitamins and they're worthless. They're not. I'm telling you, these vitamins really will help you uh, age better, as will all the other vitamins we talk about, like D with K, C, um, Gamma E, um, all those. But, you know, I went, I did combine a lot of those for my 
uh, multivitamin that's just loaded with all kinds of things, as you know. Go back and look and see what's in my multivitamin and the doses. It's potent. You know, I, the problem was with me, I was taking too many different supplements. I was having to get a fishing tackle box and line them all up every day, and I was taking a lot of different vitamins. Uh, so I wanted to combine them. And I finally found a pharmacy out in Portland, Oregon, Freedom to Formulate, that would do this for me. So I work with them in creating some of my own vitamin lines, like my immune support, the healthy hair, the super vitamin, uh, the energy vitamin that has PQQ along with CoQ10 in it. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm really into this. I really want to combine them so that it will be in one pill and it'll be affordable for people. Um, so I've developed a longevity vitamin that contains what I think or the big three that most people need for this, nicotinamide, riboside, astragalus, and apigenin. So they're all three in one vitamin in the proper doses that you need to help you. You know, if you just have a little bit, of, it's probably not going to help you, but you need the doses. If anybody ever tells you that omega-3s didn't prove out like that, it's because they weren't using enough of the omega-3s. So... You know, you kind of have to know what you're doing with this. You have to build a little bit of trust. You know, these things I take myself. I certainly wouldn't prescribe them or recommend them to my patients unless I was taking them myself. Um, so I hope this helps you. The longevity vitamins that help. Any of this other stuff we, we've talked about. I've talked a lot about metformin in the past. There's Veritrol and some of these other things that you can do. But as you age, certainly... Uh, for baby boomers like me, you need to start thinking about this. So, um, but remember, nothing replaces exercise, great nutrition, um, sleep, decreasing stress, and hormone evaluation and optimization. And look at you, looking at your inflammatory markers. Try to tampen down those processes that cause oxidative stress in our body. So I hope this helps. This vitamin is going to be available very soon in all my offices. I hope you'll take a look at it and do your own research. Thanks. This is Dr. Tom Rogers at the Common Sense MD. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.